What's up everybody? It's your favorite robot who's not built for speed's favorite nerd and today we are looking at the Bad Cube Trail Breaker. Uh, Trail Breaker has a special place in my heart. Uh, people often ask like what was your first Transformer? And I don't know if I even remember to be honest, fair, true into myself. But I think Trail Breaker might be the one. Not 100% sure, but I think it might be the one. Also, I too am not known for my speed. I am not a quick fella. I am slow. I'm steady. I'm not going to quit on you. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get to the finish line, and I'll never stop. But there's a good chance everybody's going to finish ahead of me. Side note, side story, from my childhood. I don't know if it was this way when you guys grew up, but uh, we had to run a mile every year in gym class. One mile, not too long. I, 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 don't, I don't know about it, the rest of you, but I, 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 I do a little bit of working out. I don't like to talk about it. I'm, I, don't, I don't post it on my Facebook. I don't wear a fancy watch to track it. I just do my own thing. And I keep it private and to myself. But I do about four to six miles a week. But back then, one mile seemed like an eternity prime. And every year, I would come in second to last. There was always one chick that like was in my grade that we always went through gym class together and I made a point to make sure I beat her so I wasn't dead last. But enough about me, let's get to this toy. The vehicle mode is pretty awesome. It is very reminiscent, it gives you those nostalgic feels, has the rubber tires, um, great paint, great finish, great weight, etc. It does have some issues, we're going to talk about them in a second, but he does come with a ton of accessories. We're going to save most of them for robot mode because they all have the same sort of connection to go on the other side of the hand, and I can't figure out a way to uh, incorporate them into vehicle mode. That's not to say there isn't one, it's just to say that I can't figure it out. He also comes with an alternate face. A uh, nice paint finish, both on the blue, it's like the metallic blue, and then on the black, it's like a metallic black gray, like a charcoal. Really, really nice. He also comes with uh, an extra accessory for the Sunstreaker. This is, this, I, I'm going to tell you to be careful. It is nice, and it looks, it looks the part. It fits into the back of the vehicle mode. Uh, the yellow paint is chipping a bit on mine. Yellow's a, a hard color to work with, so I, I do have, but you see the bend there? Now, it is a bit of a pliable plastic, but I would say be very careful. This is a tight hinge here, and you get an awful lot of leverage by manipulating it here, so be careful. Move from the base, so to speak, and then it, I think it also swivels, no? I think it's supposed to, but mine is definitely not moving at the moment. Either way, uh, it's a cool little afterthought that they included. Probably should have come with Sunstreaker himself, but what are you going to do? Can't win them all. As for this fella, uh, let's talk about him. We'll do a quick size comparison. Bet you guys don't know who I'm going to use for that. Tiger Tracks. And I think that that's fine. I think that that works. I think that this is good overall. I also like to see, just for SNGs, if he can fit in the back of Optimus, and he cannot. A bit too tall. So, not that you need them to, not that you'll have them displayed in this mode, but just in case you wanted to. I do have a couple issues with this, now that we've done praising it. And, uh, for those that are new to the channel, I have, people are always a little bit surprised when I critique stuff. That's what we do here at Skullface Reviews, so get ready for some critiquing. This is a final product, it's going to be critiqued as such. There's pain issues, okay? There's a couple smudges and imperfections uh, in, in the finish on the black. I think you can see one right there. There's also one right down there that you can see. Right, that, that light is picking it up very well. There's similar two spots right on the other side. I'll see if I can't get the reflection to come in at the right place. I'm not sure that I'm going to be, be able to. Right there, you can kind of see it. Right there and down in there. Uh, also... Where the black is on this translucent piece, it's chipped all along the edges. Um, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. And, and the reason why it's a bummer, we have one other place to talk about, so uh, just bear with me. But the reason why it's a bummer is because the finish on this is very nice. And all of the, uh, I'm guessing this is all tampo paint, all that is done extremely sharp and extremely nice. Like, it's, it looks really good. So the... The imperfections that maybe wouldn't stand out as much on a normal uh, third-party release, off they stand out. They, they stand out like a sore thumb to me on here, just because the, in comparison, the rest of it has done so well. Uh, the other problem is this part of the transformation. So these wheels plug in here into the sides of the thighs. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this. And I'm going to try to zoom in on it, but there's a good shot of it if it can focus. Um, 
this peg is scratching silver off of this finished thigh. And the reason is, is because the tolerance may not be accounted for the silver. And it's the same on this side, and it's along the edges there. Can you see that? So that's an issue, something you want to be mindful of. If this is something that you're going to ultimately display in robot mode, and you're having issues with the tires, my advice to you is to let it go. Much like the princess in the Disney movie Frozen. Because uh, what you're going to do is you're going to end up trying to push, 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 and all you're going to do is, is kind of take more and more paint off of the finish. And that's not something that you want to do. You just spend a significant amount of money on a toy, young sir. But everything looks good. The chrome looks good. The rest of it looks good. Just those things that I've pointed out. Rubber tires. These are a flexible piece here. Um, the bottom cleans up extremely well. It rolls well. Uh, I will say that the, the reason why I say all that is because these do have a hard time staying in, at least on mine. Um, but it still rolls well, although push too hard and, and it comes right out, right? So to speak. Good grief. But yeah, blue translucent, all that stuff, smart choices here. So uh, I guess we'll get going. Before we do, though, um, this is Bad Cube. So what I like to do with Bad Cube in terms of transformations is I like to transform it pretty much step by step in concert with the instructions. Because Bad Cube pieces are generally more complicated than other transforming pieces and I like to judge the instructions because the instructions uh, for a piece for pieces that are this complex should be very thorough and very specific so I like to kind of critique both and we'll talk about it at the end in terms of how it finishes up so I like to do that um, I don't know I don't want to say at least uh, how I feel about the complex transformations until the final thoughts um, but I will say that they are, with this company, they are predictable. So you should know what you're getting into. Like, even a weatherman would predict this appropriately. Yes, thanks a lot. Well, this afternoon, transformation is going to certainly suck. And back to you, Jim. So we're obviously going to collage this because, well, bad cube. So we're going to push these in. Uh, they actually just tell you to move them out. We're going to push in here because it gives us kind of the proper leverage uh, to move them out. And there's a, a relatively stiff joint uh, in terms of the swivel here. So it's best to have that. Uh, and then we're going to lift these arm armatures up and out to the side the best we can. We're going to just kind of keep those together for now. We then bring this whole back section down. Now, that's tabbed in there and there. The first time you do it may be a little tight, but you just want to kind of get this out of the way. Now, I know this is tedious, but with Bad Cube, I really like to go step by step. A, a lot of people end up appreciating the transformation steps with the Bad Cube video. So, with these flaps here down at the bottom, bring them up. The tires, they're on armatures here, they're a little loose bring them around so that the back of the vehicle looks like this. And then you can split this and have two separate sections, which obviously end up becoming the legs. A lot of moving pieces here. We're gonna take our time. Bring this whole section down. You can lift this piece up here. We'll get that out of the way. This is one of the steps that the instructions aren't super clear about, but you want to extend this piece and this piece so that this piece comes down and this piece comes back. You want this at a 90 degree angle to the rest of the leg. And then you want to bring this piece around and then turn it so that on the inside of the leg is the bump and on the outside of the leg is this floppy piece. And we're going to stop. The, well, actually, one, one more thing we're going to do is we're going to push this little armature out. If you can see that, this piece here. And we're going to extend that so that that fills in that space. All right, on the other side, we're gonna flip this tire around and tuck it inside. And then we're gonna bring this final piece down so that that tab there plugs into this slot. Meanwhile, bringing this piece around to fill in that void space. The final thing that you wanna do just in terms of this lower leg is bring this floppy piece around and then this hinges out as well and then the final thing you want to do is rotate this silver piece on the outer thigh 180 degrees which is easier said than done and much easier said uh, without chipping the paint 
there. Now we're going to do this other one. We're going to try to do it all in one take. Uh, there is a step that I, I forgot to film because it kind of happened naturally while we were transforming it. So we're going to do one leg total. Slide this piece in. That puts the leg in line. It'll be relatively intuitive, I think. Uh, for this section here, for me, I need it to sit right on top of the leg in order to kind of stay oriented. But you want to get this armature here out of the way. And then rotate this, it's hard to explain, this piece down or almost up counterclockwise by rotating this piece or this piece clockwise and this piece counterclockwise so that that comes in there like that. Before you straighten it all the way, you probably want to flip this piece out here. Um, not all the way, but just enough to get it through that opening so to speak, so that that will clean up nicely. Open all this up. Remember, we're going to keep this uh, little angle here, this triangle at 90 degrees perpendicular to the leg. Bring the foot down and then rotate it. All right. On the other side, we're going to take the tire, we're going to rotate around and in, and then we're going to bring this whole piece here so that that tabs into that piece and clean that up. Fold this down, bring this around, and then bring this around as well. And then the final thing is to rotate this one piece, which is a bit of a pain in the balls. There. You'll notice that they're a bit floppy. And that's because these two red sections do push in. And that locks the upper ratchet. So the upper body. The first time you do this, it's going to be a little challenging. But you got to open up this section here. It's this... Uh, black plastic guard around the bottom of the bumper, front bumper. Flip that up. You want to bring these out and you're just trying to get the arms loose from underneath uh, this canopy here. so that it looks a bit like this. And then you just want to rotate these tires 180 degrees to the inside. On the other side, make sure that you have the shoulder, what ends up being the shoulder guards or pads or whatever, up and out of the way, and then rotate the arms down. We're gonna start working on them next. This is the shoulder piece, right? It's, it's rel this is relatively intuitive. This armature here is on a slider. Um, so if for vehicle mode, it sits, it sits more in, just slide it to the opposite side. This peg or tab here will go into that slot, so close up. This piece that sits along the forearm untabs, wraps around, and plugs in here, there, and here, into here, there, there, and there, with this top piece being the last portion. This is on a hinge here, so it'll fold around, tab together, no fuss, no muss. Now, this is the piece where if you want to use any of the accessories in that fashion, uh, oh, I'm sorry, so you gotta open up this, and this tabs in to there. I don't like that. There. And it's nice and secure, um, but I think the clip would have kind of done it well just by itself. I'm not crazy about the way that they did that. It doesn't ultimately matter. We're going to get through this. Bring our hand out. 
close up the forearm, orient the hand, and then this is the final piece here. It just rotates down. Okay, so let's do that again on this side. So you want this piece out and then this piece around, all right? Bring the shoulder piece up and slide the bar over so that it tabs in to the back of the shoulder piece. Then you bring this flap up and around. Make sure that all tabs in appropriately. Open this flap at the bottom of the forearm. Bring the hand out. Rotate the hand to orient it. Close that down. Rotate this piece. And those are your arms done. Flip this piece open and this piece down. This will cup come un underneath, so to speak. These two tabs will tab into there. And as you do so, the head should pop up on the side. Mine has already done it f just from fiddling with the transformation, but these armatures sit down like this, bring these around and lock them into the sides. Same on the other side, obviously. And then you push the whole torso to the back. Okay, we're going to get a couple things squared away before we sort this backpack out. You can flip these up here. These are the, you know, you know his, his, his bit of business that he's got going on. Flip these up in the back. And then uh, let's 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 tab the arms in so it's one kind of less fiddly thing out of the way. These are on double hinges; they're a little tight, but if you just work it up, and then you should be able to tap lock it into into place. So here's the other one, and locked in. And now we have this, which can be the most frustrating part. There's a couple of secrets or tips, I guess, that help me. Uh, part of this is just kind of fiddly, so you want to kind of, so this is here, the, the one piece, is three pieces, right? So that is hinged at 90 degrees, that's how that's going to be. This piece comes up and around, I, th I think to the bottom, it, it's hard to stay oriented, but if you move the whole backpack down, try to keep the head up. Remember you have this piece open. This piece sits against the bottom but you can just bring this out. This will allow you space in between here to work which is nice. Basically the, the line that you're trying to find is, let me get a screwdriver, these tabs and the, right there. There's one on each side. And right there. They need to go into these slots right there, one on each side. And if you get that lined up, everything else will kind of fall into place, and then you just have to orient around it. So we're going to bend this here. We're going to bring this to the, to the outside of the, of the thing. So that this shape here is 90 degrees, and this is sitting on the outside. And... This hinge here also needs to be on the outside, and you're trying to manipulate this all so that this piece slides into this cavity. And I almost have it. So I'm going to try to get this one oriented as well. We're going to bend here at 90 degrees. We're going to wrap this car door around into the back. And we're going to try to angle both of these in. While simultaneously lining the top piece up. And this is just, this is the most challenging part in my opinion. Alright, I think that's good there. There. The last and final piece is is this section here. There's two tabs right there, and they plug into those two uh, ports. 
and you just gotta line it up. At least I think they do. Maybe it's down below. Yeah. And that's that's him. Um, I'll get him cleaned up and we'll take a look at him. All right, so let's talk about him. Uh, as you can see, we showed prior, but weapon holds it just fine. No issues there. And real quick to interject, of those accessories, it does come with a few. Um, you get three of these, uh, decent sculpt and silver paint applied, which looks good. And then you get one of these, and they're all from different you know parts of the cartoon, and they all plug in and work the same way. There. So let's talk about them head to toe. Uh, the head is on a ball peg. Uh, we do have the nice blue paint once again and silver paint on the face, which I do think really makes the face pop. Uh, Articulation-wise, you get all the full range up a fair bit down. And the swivel, and because of the ball pad, you can even do the confused dog look if that's your thing. Waist swivel, a little squeaky, but it's fine. These uh, articulate us on a double hinge here and a hinge at the base, so you can do pretty much whatever your little heart desires with this. Um, I prefer... The one hinge all the way over as far as you can go, and then this hinge straight up to this. And then this articulates back to here on this hinge, or you can get it all the way forward to there. Or more of a straight up. Once again, plenty of options. The shoulders. Um, this is where a little trouble comes into paradise. This, this you can obviously get out of your way to manipulate the shoulder. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But we're going to show this one just for the sake of... Uh, easiness I guess accessibility so we have a, a hinge here at the chest that gets you pretty much everything that you would want then there's a ball peg from this hinge into this shoulder which gets you the swivel it's a tight ball peg so the tolerance is good but it's still not optimal um, one of the things the reasons why this is a ball peg is because of the complexity of the engineering um, which of course you know we'll talk about in final thoughts not a lick of paint on the shoulder, which does make the shoulder stand out against the chest, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, same with the pelvis. The paint that's applied to the chest is beautiful. And that against the plain plastic of these shoulders does make it stick out. Bicep swivel just above the elbow, but it's ultimately fine with a single hinged elbow getting you a bit, uh, I'd say a, a significant portion past 90 degrees, so all in all good. Nice silver finish on the arm, that looks great. The hand is on a swivel at the wrist, and then this is the strangest thing to me. So it's a base pen knuckle at the bottom hinge that comes out to a second knuckle, and there's basically two fingers that are sculpted like four. It's it's very weird. It's like he's got a little flipper hand. It's like he's a penguin in uh, Batman Returns. Nah, nah, nah. It could be worse. My nose could be gushing, or my face could be gushing with blood, something like that. You guys know the reference. Um... But I, I, it doesn't have to hold any weapons or anything, so I guess ultimately it's okay. But it is, like, it, 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 look, you either get this thing in a fist or a slightly relaxed, it's, it's, to be honest with you, it's just pretty much a fist. So that sucks. That's dumb. I don't care what you say. This is, this is a, a, not a, a smart design. It's cheesy, uh, which is a bummer. Okay, so waist swivel we already talked about. We got universals for hips. That gets you up to here. There are, there are friction joints, which isn't optimal. Back to here, and then all the way out to the side. So the full Monty, the full Van Dam, no problem. Uh, thigh swivels built into the bottom of the Universal with a silver paint finish on the thigh, which is also really, really sharp. It does scratch a little bit as you're moving stuff around, but it still looks pretty good overall. You have these knees, which are a little wonky. So the top knee is ratcheted. And that gets you 90 degrees. And then the bottom knee has a hinge as well for a double jointed knee, which gets you the full range, but does ultimately get to be a little floppy. And it does look a little strange with that little gap in, in the knee joints to me anyway. Now, I've messed with this to see if I could figure out a way to kind of make this less strange. And I can't, I, I can't figure out a way to do it. That doesn't mean there's not a way. It just means that I can't figure out a way, at least currently. Uh, we have red paint and silver paint down here at the bottom. It doesn't match 100%, but it does look pretty good overall. And then you have this silver paint stripe down the center of the leg, which looks good as well. The uh, ankles are on, you get a foot, basically nothing, but you get a foot tilt. I guess you get this whole bit here. It's fine. Um, so we'll give it to them. A tilt 
nothing up a little bit down and the rocker is just a toe swivel it's a cheat for the foot so that's uh, that's fair this is floppy there are some 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 pieces here that aren't as as solid as you would prefer them to be the arms pretty much work fine um all this stuff plugs in fine it's just pretty much i guess the feet and this this bottom knee and the the feet and all this stuff you kind of got to sort once you get them posed he'll be fine but uh but yeah it's it's not it's not it's not ideal it, it also well we'll talk about it in final thoughts and for a size comparison there he is with some other mps of various sizes and i think it's a great size i think it i think it works quite well um i got ironhide a little leaning forward here but they're ironhide slightly taller but they're about the same size and i think it works pretty well Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the issues. So accessories, I don't like the way that they plug in. I think that the simple clip onto the bar would have been fine. I think that the extra circle not only creates a gap in robot mode, but it also makes plugging the accessories in and out just more challenging, difficult, scratching paint, etc. It's just silly. I don't think it was necessary and I don't care for it. The paint where it is applied is applied extremely well. The silver, all the tampo paint, and the black paint all looks great. The problem is that it looks very strikingly different against the plain matte black of all the other unfinished plastic. And it has a tendency to really stick out. Especially between the chest and the head, the chest and the arms, and then the different parts of the legs. Especially this little piece on the foot, this die cast that sits up against this piece. Speaking of that piece on the foot, that's another problem that we have across here. Some of the stuff is really floppy. Now, most of it when it locks in place locks away well, but it still looks, it still feels a little floppy, especially this piece here and the knees are a little wonky to kind of work with. They're not the worst thing in the world and you'll definitely get them to work for posing on your shelf. It's just not the best. In addition, some ratchets would have been nice, both in both joints of the knees and in the hips that would have been, I don't know, just it would have just made the whole thing feel a little bit more solid. There's also a thing which is more of a subjective opinion, I suppose, that for all of the work that you have to do to get from point A to point B, you do kind of wish it was more at the end. You kind of wish that all of this cleaned up a little bit better, that there were certain things that weren't as quite as strange as they end up being because of the amount of effort it takes to get from point A to point B. It's, it's not that it's bad. It's, I think it looks pretty good. It's just that if it was like five or six less steps in the transformation process, it would, it would feel like you got more uh, reward of the process. It's kind of like you get to the end and you're like, huh, I guess, uh, I guess this is what we got. All in all, though, I do have a lot of good to say about this as well. All the articulation pretty much works. There's a couple things that are a little weird, but for the most part it works, especially those hands, which I didn't talk about in my gripes, but I think I've already mentioned it quite enough. The paint, where it is applied, is applied extremely well. Unfortunately, you kind of get most of your bang for your buck with it in car mode as opposed to robot mode, but robot mode still has enough to go around. I love the sculpt of the face. I feel like a lot of character comes across and it has a strong presence. It's ultimately a pretty good looking bot and it looks good with the other masterpieces on the shelf. So I think it definitely scratches the itch. It's not as good as I would like it to be and the transformation is not as fun as I would like it to be, but it's not as bad as War Dog, yet I feel like they made greater strides in Sunstreaker. So it's somewhere between War Dog and what was it, Sun Surge? It's somewhere between the two in terms of fulfilling and intuitive transformations, which is where I feel like they kind of get lost in the sauce. But I also know that that's part of their gimmick and that they appeal to people that enjoy extremely challenging transformations. Not that this one is extremely challenging, but it's, it's definitely not an easy one. And I know there's people out there that are like, uh, I prefer the more challenging transformations because I am not a child and I like a good puzzle. And that's great for you, dude. I'm happy for you. I'm just saying that I like to be able to flip a thing back and forth, and this is not one that I'm going to be flipping back and forth. Do I recommend it? Well, speaking of flipping back and forth, let's talk about it. I absolutely recommend it if you're a transform once pose and then once a year maybe repose like I am for the most part. I just don't have time to muck about. If you are a guy who likes to flip back and forth all the time, this one may not be for you. I think that you're going to notice a lot more paint chipping and wearing as you transform it back and forth. There's a lot of tight spaces you got to got to cram things in. It's all accounted for. It's not like there's clearance issues in the same way that X Transbots has clearance clearance issues, but it's still going to take some some pieces sliding across pieces and over time that paint will ultimately fail. 
So if you are a guy that likes to flip back and forth, I, I, I recommend you pass on this. If you're a Transform Once pose, display, and be good, I strongly recommend this. It is a pretty good looking bot, and it definitely has a lot of character that comes across, and a character that doesn't ultimately and objectively have a lot of character traits that portray itself naturally in a robot mode. I think the Trailbreaker is one of the more boring characters visually and this still has a way that it kind of makes it seem interesting and seem like there's a story behind him. So I definitely dig that. Other than that, I hope that helps. I'm going to try to get my hands on the MMC version, but this is the version that I bought from my collection. There's things I've, I've handled the MMC prototype. I haven't handled the finished figure. Uh, the, the MMC one, uh, I can tell you it cleans up a lot better than this one. So it definitely has that going for it. The transformation is probably more intuitive. So if you are a guy that likes to flip back and forth, I think that its strength will probably be in the MMC one as well. But it doesn't have a lot of paint and therefore doesn't have a lot of pizzazz. And in a figure that is, as we've already kind of said, a more boring character to look at, it's even more boring without the paint. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.